Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode 242 of Ask Dave. Today we're going to take a little tour. On our way home from Quartz Fest, my wife and I stopped by Alamogordo, New Mexico to see Brad Rich, N6GR, who you will recall helped me install my Step IR, Big IR antenna. And we wanted to take a look at Brad's grounding system. He had a, a home that he bought in September and uh, needed to get proper grounding in place for not only for his station but also for a tower uh, that he was building. This episode takes a look at his station. Now I will tell you off the bat this is a high-end installation but it's interesting to take a look at some of the things that he did. So let's just dive in and see how he approached grounding his station. Hi, my name is Brad Rich. I'm November 6 Golf Romeo in 6GR uh, here in Alamogordo, New Mexico. I've uh, been here since September and I've been building an amateur radio station since, uh, which will include uh, about a 70 foot tower and a step IR uh, beam. Uh, my first project and major concern was establishing a good ground system. Uh, why put up a tower and a beam if you have a noisy environment? Uh, not to mention safety associated with large static discharges, you know, including lightning. Uh, being in the desert, I knew that I might have to work a little bit harder at it because desert ground connectivity isn't as good as it could be or as it is in other parts of the United States. So I knew I wasn't uh, approaching anything near an expert in grounding systems, so I acquired the uh, AWRL uh, grounding book, read it, took a look at a couple chapters in the uh, RCA book, and uh, realized that how do I know if my ground system is good enough? I don't, unless I can measure it. So I purchased, uh, excuse me, should have had this out. This is a used ground testing meter. It's made by AEMC. It's a model 6416. And you simply clamp this around the ground wire and it tells you how much resistance you have and also any milliamp uh, current flow that might be in your system. So now that I was able to measure it, it uh, got a lot more fun. Uh, I got to measure to see where I was at, got to add ground rods, uh, and watched, uh, watched the improvement. Uh, and we'll talk about the improvements and where I, where I started at and where I finished uh, during the rest of this uh, video. Uh, we're standing at the uh, electrical service entry panel. You can see the circuit breaker panel here where the uh, wire from the transformer comes in from the street. Uh, what's unique about this is I have three electrical circuit breaker panels. The entry, one for the home, and one for the shack. And we'll give you a property overview so you can see what's uh, going on. Uh, when I moved in, we had one ground rod right there. And I measured the ground resistance and it was about 25 ohms and I felt uh, that wasn't uh, low enough that I wanted to improve on that. So after reading the AWRL uh, grounding book, uh, I learned that if I install a second ground rod it needs to be one ground rod length away from the first ground rod. So I dug an 18 inch trench. You know when I dug it it was straight but it's kind of curving now, it's kind of interesting. But uh, at the end of the 18th inch trench, which is about nine feet long, I installed a second ground rod. And the way I install ground rods in this desert property where the ground is typically uh, not as good as it could be somewhere else, I augered a six inch hole about four feet deep, drove the ground rod as far as I could into the center of that hole, 
and then backfilled it with something called ground enhancement material. Uh, this is a powdery substance you get in 25 pound bags. You mix it with water, uh, it becomes a thick slurry that you pour into the hole and in my case I pour it into the trench and it dries concrete hard and uh, it's a fill ground enhancement material that's carbon based. Uh, you use it to backfill the holes in the trench to achieve a lower ground resistance. So it bonds to the earth a lot better than just packing in loose dirt and in theory provides better conductivity, uh, lower resistance. Ultimately after the installation of the second ground rod I measured about 10 ohms. So we went from 25 to about 10 ohms with the service entry ground. Okay, as you can see, uh, I have a house that's separated from the uh, service entry, the electrical service entry panel that is, and a separate uh, garage slash workshop that I converted into a living area, which is now my employment office and my ham shack. Uh, the big question is, how are the grounds established for these two buildings? Uh, I found that both installations utilize UFER grounds. Uh, those are grounds where the electrical panels are attached to the rebar in the building's foundation. And that provides a pretty good ground based on the research I, uh, I completed. So my grounding system and electrical system includes three circuit breakers, the service entry, the main house, and uh, the shack. The two buildings have, as I mentioned before, UFER grounds. Okay, we're standing here by the uh, RF entry panel. It includes a very nice copper plate where we have uh, lightning rusters attached and control cable uh, ground systems. There's two things to note here. We have a number, looks like a number six, eh, might be, yeah, number six wire going to my first ground rod that was installed for the RF entry. And we also have about a two inch copper strap attached to the plate, which goes inside the shack to the equipment ground. Now, after the installation of the first ground rod, I measured about, uh, I think it was 25 ohms, much like this, the service entry measured with a single ground rod. And again, I didn't feel that was adequate, so I had the concrete cut about eight feet away so I can install the second ground rod. Again, using the same system of digging a six inch uh, augered hole, driving the ground rod in the middle, backfilling with the ground enhancement material, uh, connecting the two ground rods together. And after doing that, the resistance went to 25 to about 10 ohms. Better, but not completely happy, but we had more to do. Uh, about eight feet away from the second ground rod is the tower's ground system. You can see that each tower leg has a ground wire going to its own dedicated ground rod. Again, there's an 18 inch uh, trench dug in a circle around the tower. The three ground rods installed using the same system I described earlier and all three ground rods are bonded together with number two copper wire. And that entire ring ground system is attached to the second ground rod for the RF entry, which bonds the tower to the RF entry panel, to the circuit breaker, and since the circuit breaker panel inside the shack is bonded to the service entry, which is again bonded to the house. All the grounds are common. They're all bonded together uh, as described in the ARRL grounding book and uh, I believe RCA says to do the same thing. 
by the way, RCA's minimum, no, their maximum uh, spec for ground resistance is uh, 10 ohms for their towers. So if it's not 10 or under, they add more ground rods, do whatever it takes to get under that number. Uh, I think I mentioned, uh, oh no, I didn't mention it, but after bonding the tower ground system to the RF entry panel, uh, the measured resistance dropped from 10 ohms to 3.5 ohms. And I was very, very happy with that. In fact, I even emailed uh, my ground specification to the manufacturer of the ground testing meter and the uh, tech responded back that I'd done everything the way it should have and, uh, and I should be very happy with the result. Okay, you're looking at the equipment ground uh, bar. Uh, you can see the two inch copper strap that came in from the RF entry panel uh, to the ground bar. It's a little bit long because the uh, ground bar used to be on the desk and I moved it underneath so that's another project I need to shorten that. Uh, ideally you like to keep anything associated with ground wires or straps as short as possible. Uh, the uh, one inch tinned uh, copper straps are going to uh, the various equipment I have in the shack, the transceiver, the amplifier, got a step IR controller, some other things that have uh, ground lugs attached. So uh, based on that we know that all the equipment is sharing the same ground that the rest of the uh, property is sharing. You know, the two, the, uh, the home, the shack, and the uh, electrical service entry panel. Well, that concludes our tour of Brad Station. We looked at his original entry panel, uh, looked at the ways that he dealt with his uh, grounding situation right outside his shack and again at his tower, and then looked at uh, how he was addressing it inside his station. One of the things that Brad used was a, a ground test meter that looked uh, sort of like this. His was a different color. And in an upcoming video, I will show how this works. I now have uh, thumb drives available with the training videos for both technician, general, and extra. I guess that's not both, it's three. And they're available on my website if you go to decastlercom support. Also, if you'd like to put a little something in the tip jar, please do so. Um, there's also a recurring tip jar. I had a little bit of a problem here recently where uh, a, somebody who was contributing forgot what that was for. So, uh, and it caused a little bit of a problem with PayPal. So I have started the practice of having my assistant send a thank you note every month to those who uh, contribute to that. Note that anything that you do uh, will show up on your visa statement or MasterCard statement as Mount Sneffels Press. That's a company I set up quite a number of years ago to uh, publish some books. And I don't publish the books anymore, although they are available on Amazon. Uh, but uh, that is the business name that I use there. So if you see that, that's, that's what that means. Thank you for all the support that you provide to me, and thank you for being such good Augies. What a wonderful audience you are. I sure enjoy our Saturday live stream every Saturday at uh, noon U.S. Mountain Standard Time, uh, which is 1900 UTC on Saturday. Try to do one every Saturday. Um, I might skip one once in a while, but I really do try to do one every Saturday. So until we next meet, 73.